Hello, and welcome to the new season of The Academics. I'm your host, Paul Gates. Midterm elections are coming up soon. Do you know how to vote? We're here to talk you through it. Joining me today is the director of the Watauga County Board of Elections, Matt Snyder. So, welcome, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having we've, me. We've, we've just got a couple of weeks to go here. It's uh, just over a month. Um, what are the, let's start at the beginning. Uh, the, the most fundamental part, I guess, of voting is registering. Yes, sir. So, what are the steps to registering to vote? Well, registering to vote is very easy. Um, all that's required, really, is to fill out a voter registration form and submit that to our office by October 12th. Um, you can get forms at our office, which is located at the Watauga County uh, Courthouse. Uh, you can go to our website uh, and download a form there. Um, we do need an original signature, so they need to be mailed in or dropped off. Uh, but once we receive that, we go ahead and process everyone. Um, and then we uh, mail out a voter verification card to their uh, residential address or whatever mailing address that they list. And then as long as that card doesn't come back to us, they're, they're ready to, uh, to go vote. Well, since, since we're pretty close to the courthouse, I, th I think a lot of people probably register that way. I think I, think I did, in fact, a long time ago. Um, but can people, it's right there on the first floor. It of the is. Courthouse. That's correct. Uh, can people fill the form out right there and, and just drop it as, they, sure as they leave? It, it takes you, you know, a minute to a minute and a half to fill out the form. They can leave it with us and um, we'll have them processed by the end of the day and we mail out cards on Fridays. When's the deadline for registering for the next, the next voting? Great question. Uh, October 12th at 5 p.m. is the deadline for what we would call our normal registration. Um, however, if you miss that, you still have the opportunity to register and vote on the same day during the early voting period, which begins October 17th. There's some slight differences in the two registrations, uh, but either would allow you to vote. I mean, the, the process is slightly different in each? It, it is. Yeah. With, with the, uh, the form by October 12th, it's, it's simply submitted to us, and we mail you that verification card. Uh, with the same-day registration process, you do have to show proof of residence within Watauga County. And that can either be your driver's license or a utility bill or a bank statement, something that's mm -hmm. current within the last couple months that establishes your address within the county. I see. And you would also need to vote uh, during the one-stop period if you registered at one stop. If you register at one stop, it does not allow you to vote on election day. I see. So you get the whole early period, though, to vote that's one stop. That's correct. That's correct. And just, just excluded just that one day. Correct. Correct. Make it easy to do it ahead of time. Yes. And then that's, uh, I think that's a good process for, for most people. That's, I always take advantage of, yes. the, uh, of the, early, the early date, which you said is October 17th. That's correct. We start October 17th through November 2nd, Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and then the last Saturday, November 3rd, we're open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we have six locations around the county. Uh, they are the county administration building. Uh, right here on campus at the Plemons Student Union in the Blue Ridge Ballroom. Uh, also at the Blowing Rock Town Hall, the Meat Camp Fire Department, the Deep Gap Fire Department, and the Western Watauga Community Center. So we have 966 hours of early voting available to citizens of Watauga County, and you can vote at any of those one-stop sites. You don't have to vote mm -hmm. at the one closest to you, but as long as you're registered in the county, you can stop by at any of those sites and vote. And uh, with that many hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., I hope everybody gets out to vote this year. That's, that's good. That's, that's, that's the way to do it, the way to attract voters, make it easy for them to, to cast the ballot. Well, that's voting in, in person, which I, I think we've covered pretty well now. What other ways are there to vote, and what are the rules governing that? Sure. A great question. Um, so we, we have an unusual county. We have a lot of folks that uh, either through the university or someone like Samaritan's Purse travel out of the country. Uh, we also have some military folks that are stationed around the country. Uh, so we have an absentee by mail uh, process that allows folks to submit um, an absentee ballot request form, which you can again get on our website uh, or from the state board's website, um, and that needs to be sent in to us. If it's a domestic ballot, uh, it can be signed not only by the voter but by near relatives as well. And that, we do not need an original signature, so it can be emailed to us, faxed to us, uh, or mailed to us, and then we will send a ballot out to the voter wherever they are. Now, if folks are overseas, they have the option to receive that via email, and that's military and non-military folks. Uh, again, they, they submit the uh, absentee ballot request form. 
Uh, if you're overseas, it must be your signature at the bottom of the form. And then we simply email you a, uh, a packet with information. Uh, you print out your ballot, you mark it, you can uh, scan it or fax it uh, back to us. And then um, when we have our absentee board meetings, our board members, bipartisan, will get together. They will mark an actual ballot uh, that represents the ballot that was sent in via email. And uh, you can vote that way. We've heard a lot over the last few years about voter ID. Mm -hmm. And I can remember it when it was in effect one time. Sometimes it's not in effect. What are the, what's the current status of that and how does that affect the voting process? Certainly, great question. There is no voter ID required uh, to vote uh, in the elections in North Carolina this year. Um, there is one exception uh, and that would be to folks that are first time registrants and um, either did not provide on the registration form the last four digits of their social security number or North Carolina driver's license number, or we couldn't validate those numbers, um, then they are going to be required to show uh, uh, an ID when they come to vote as a first time voter. I see. But we, we would have mailed them a notice uh, saying that, uh, notice, ID required to vote mm -hmm. on, their, on their voter card. What are some of the things particularly students should be aware of? Um, um, either students who are already registered or somebody who's perhaps just turned 18 mm -hmm. since the last election, are there any particular things that first-timers should, should be aware of? We you must be registered in the county in which you vote. So um, if you would like to vote in Watauga County, you need to be registered in Watauga County. It's not, um, our state system isn't set up so that your registration allows you to vote in any county. So uh, it's very important to know that uh, the county in which you want to vote, must, you must be registered in that county. Um, despite having an early voting period and an election day period, each person is only allowed to vote at once during those. Uh, they aren't two different separate voting events. Um, not that that's an issue, but sometimes it's a question we get, you know, um, why is there an early voting and election day? Can I vote in both? It's, it's no, it's an option of an either or. Um, that voting is very easy. That's, that's the biggest thing I guess I'd want to get across. Um, it's a very easy process. Um, it shouldn't take you very long. Um, it's important to do. Um, but if you have any questions, um, that's what we're here for at the Board of Elections. You can call our office, you can Google us and, and find our contact info, uh, but we're happy to answer any questions mm -hmm. folks may have. Uh, one other thing that um, students may run into or, or first-time voters may not be as familiar with uh, is the precinct concept. We have 20 precincts in Watauga County and that's devised uh, just to, to make it uh, operationally feasible so that we don't have everybody coming to one place. So the county is divided into 20 little uh, districts kind of and each person is assigned to a specific precinct. If you vote <laughs> out of your precinct you would need to vote by a provisional ballot. I see. Is there, is there help available? I mean, this is, you, you mentioned the long ballot and a lot of, a lot of races, and um, is there some, you know, vote for two or vote for just one, or is it is that kind of thing on the ballot to be aware of and, and watch out for? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, above each race, it will tell, me, tell you how many people to vote that you can vote for. Mm -hmm. Uh, the majority of our contests are vote for one. However, there are a couple uh, vote for two and, a, and one vote for three, um, which would be the uh, Board of Education is a vote for three. Mm -hmm. um, the Soil and Water Conservation is a vote for two. So um, please read the instructions on the ballot. It, it clearly spells out what each um, contest is about and how many people you can vote for. But as if people do have questions during the voting process, they can go to an election official and ask them. That was my next question. Mm -hmm. If you get there in person and need some guidance, the personnel are going to be there to, besides checking you in, of course, mm -hmm. but to, to help you out with questions, too? They will. They, they can't tell you um, how to vote or who you should no. vote for, or they really can't explain the constitutional amendments, things like that, mm -hmm. but they can answer technical questions about how do I do this or how do I do that. I see. A couple of other more unusual topics maybe we can, we can talk about is provisional voting, mm -hmm. which seems to be sort of a half step or a halfway measure. Can you explain how, how that works? Certainly. Uh, 
Provisional voting is kind of a fail-safe method that allows a person who's not eligible to cast a uh, regular ballot uh, that day um, to go ahead and vote, and then we determine their eligibility. And if they meet the eligibility requirements, our board would approve that provisional ballot, and it would be added to the, the totals of the election before the election is finalized. Now, tell us a little bit about the importance of voting and what, what this, why we do this. Well, it, it's a very important uh, kind of civic responsibility we all share in this country. And I, I firmly believe that uh, whether it's a candidate um, or a voter, as long as they participate, we all win. Um, you know, we all talk about winners and losers, but by being a part of this process, this great American experiment, uh, we all win. You know, I'm always grateful to the candidates because it takes a lot of time and hard work. I don't think most people understand how hard candidates work and how many hours a day they spend doing all this. Um, so as, as long as you get out and vote, uh, you win. You know, whether your candidate wins or loses, you know, you've, you've helped make this great experience um, what it should be and what it can be. And so I, I encourage everybody to get out and vote. It's a, it's a very important thing to do. If everybody keeps that in mind, it'll encourage them to actually participate. That's, that's the hope. That's great. The academic Savannah Nguyen went out to the field to let you know where you can go to vote. Appalachian State, for many students, is a home away from home. Therefore, with midterm elections coming up fast, students should know where they can vote. In 2014, students ages 18 to 29 made up approximately 21% of the eligible voting population. In the 2016 election, however, only half of those students turned out to vote. With 470 seats open for re-election, it is important for students to exercise their right to make a difference. The first step to voting is registration. Here in Watauga County, registering can be done in person at the Board of Elections office located on the first floor of the courthouse downtown at 842 West King Street. You can also register online at vote.appstate.edu. The site also allows you to check your registration status whether you're registered to vote in Watauga County or in your hometown. After registering, know that you can vote early at the Plemons Student Union in the Blue Ridge Ballroom during various dates throughout October until November 3rd. Election Day will occur on November 6th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. When it comes to voting, knowing where to do so is just as important as knowing who to vote for and why. Register to vote by Friday, October 12th and come out to your local voting station on November 6th to take part in this nationwide event. Our second guest today is going to talk to us about student involvement in voting. And to do that, we have uh, the Director of External Affairs for SGA, Lee Franklin. Welcome, Lee. Thank you. Tell us about what App Votes is. So, App Votes is a, uh, a joint effort between the Student Government Association and the ACT Office to basically help students get informed on the issues and also uh, register them to vote and let them know where they can, when and where they can vote. App Votes was started um, in the 2016 election, um, basically to serve the same purpose as we're, as we're doing now, and it kind of went dormant during we had municipal elections in 2017, and now we're bringing it back for the 2018 election. But it was it was started uh, initially by the ACT Office. What kind of services do you do? I mean, what, how do you how do you help students get acquainted with the process and, and all that? All the I guess from soup to nuts, you know, getting mm -hmm. them registered where to vote, how to vote, who's on the ballot, all that kind of stuff. You cover all those, all yeah, those things? Uh, yes, we do. So what, we, what our plan is, is first to help students get registered to vote. And we will be personally registering those students, uh, filling out the forms for them so that they don't have to worry about you know, the intricacies of the forms, because mm -hmm. um, we'll have people trained in those, uh, filling out those forms. Uh, moving forward from that, we're going to work on, and we're going to have tables in the student union that we'll be doing that from. And moving forward from that, we will have uh, a, f a few events to basically inform students of who's on the ballot, uh, what they stand for, what, the, what issues are on the ballot, because there are some constitutional amendments for our state constitution that a lot of people aren't informed on. We're also going to talk about, you know, which <laughs> levels of government each election are in and, you know, what issues, you know, if someone's running for Congress, we want students to know, well, what are the issues in Congress? Mm -hmm. And if they're running for a county commissioner, what are the issues in the county that they would need to address? You mentioned the, the six, I think there are, is that right, six constitutional yes. amendments? Those always seem to generate confusion and uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, about, you know, what the, the way the question is phrased, you know, which, which way do you, which way do you answer that to indicate 
the position you want to support. Yeah. Will you be able to to explain that to, to students? You, that That is a tough, that task itself is very tough. Because when you see a person on the ballot, you see the D or the R next to their name, you know exactly, usually pretty close to what they stand for, but that's not the case with these amendments. So I think what it really comes down to mm -hmm. is simply making sure, you know, even though the amendments will have uh, a short description explaining what they do, our goal is going to be to kind of delve into the actual language of the amendment and what, what will the what does the amendment really do? What does it really mean? Um, and how will that affect student lives? And so that's what we're going to try to convey to the students, at least on the, on the amendments issues. I see, I see. You mentioned having tables in the, in the student union. Is that there in the Hall of Flags, that, that yes, area right there? Yes, that's where we're hoping to do it, I see. yeah. And will, will that be staffed by AppVotes personnel? I mean, will it be kind of a, an ongoing mm -hmm. kind of thing? So the personnel who will be staffing it are going to be senators from the Student Government Association and uh, members from the ACT office. Mm -hmm. I mean it's all going to be volunteer, right. people who are interested in voting and interested in getting students engaged, but it will be mainly from those two organizations. Mm -hmm. that, that'll be more work for the, for the app, volunteer, app Votes volunteers uh, to, to get acquainted with all this and, yeah. and, and make sure students understand how much there is in different different races, different areas, different mm -hmm. different offices that they're voting they're voting for. Yeah, I think it's uh, we're we're taking on a daunting task, <laughs> especially with this election. But um, like I said, we're going to have uh, our our major event, and I think our ultimate goal is kind to kind of to do things almost like club expo, but mm -hmm. instead of clubs, yeah. you'll have races and issues where people can come up and learn about those issues and those races and how that they how they will affect them. So that'll be like different stations. Exactly. That you go around yeah. to just like different employers in yep. uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. the goal. I see. Can you talk to us about the uh, recent decision to move the early voting polling locations uh, from the Watauga County elections uh, from from Legends to the the Student Union. That was a big Big. I don't know if you were here then. Yes, I, yeah, I know we, a lot we, about that. You were here then? <laughs> that was a big issue, and the chancellor pushed very yeah. hard uh, to, to have that change come about, and she was successful in doing so. How, does that, how do you view that uh, process and the impact that that change has had and will have? Well, I can tell you, first of all, that site is absolutely necessary for students who live on campus, and not just for students, but also for people who live out in the county or in the town of Boone who are employed by the university. I mean, that site is accessible to everyone. Right. And everyone, many people in the county, will be able to use this outside of the student body. But it is very important for students, especially mm -hmm. ones living on campus who, you know, they don't have cars and it might be harder for them to vote. And this is the first year, actually, that the Board of Elections voted to give us the site. We have known from the start that the site will be in the student union since August. We've known it will be in the student union. We know when the hours will be, as opposed to last year when we were kind of, there were, there was, you know, uh, we, we thought we had won the case and then there was an appeal and mm -hmm. then they granted them a stay and then we thought we didn't have the site and we actually didn't know if we'd have this, uh, the student union as a site until the day before it was scheduled to open. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I am just relieved that we have the site simply sure. because yeah. it's taken, I think it's taken a burden off students in having to worry about whether or not it will even exist mm -hmm. and, and it's made it easier to inform students on where to vote because we don't have to tell them, oh well, who knows, <laughs> you know. So I'm really glad we have it and I'm really thankful that the Board of Elections has, um, has shown that they value it now as well. Right. Yeah, and, and that allows you then to focus on the races themselves, the ballots exactly. themselves, instead of fighting over the, the polling places that, that, uh, exactly. that we had to do that that one time. You know, I, I read recent, no, it wasn't that recently, but I read not too long ago talking about the importance of having voting for students in, on campus in the union. Um, is that something like 80% of students walk within something like 100 yards of the student union every mm -hmm. day and you know when you have all these early voting days uh, and all these opportunities available it really does make it make it simple for, exactly. for students to take advantage yep. of, of the right to vote and uh, you know, just just 
maybe be a, a minute or two late for class or something. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not too late. Well, but. I can tell you during early voting, there is never a line. <laughs> so, and right. I always tell students okay. that there's never a line. There's always time to vote. There will, and now because of uh, a law passed by the state legislature over the summer, the uh, student union will be open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. So there is a lot of time to vote. Uh, excellent. Well, that's and that's the way it should be. I mean, exactly. that's the way elections are supposed to be run, with making it possible for for everybody to exercise the voting franchise that that we all have. Well, thanks very much, Lee, for coming in today. We we hope we've given you an audience uh, to talk about the new understanding of the voting process and that you'll take the time to exercise your guaranteed right to vote. Thank you. That's our time for today. I'm Paul Gates. We hope you'll join us next time here on The Academics.